In today's video, we install the sexiest part yet on the XKR. Say it with me, cameramen. Welcome back to... Project Jag! Yes! Our new series, Project Jag, has seen us buy two Jaguars of differing conditions. Richard has bought back what we thought was a fairly sweet XJR from back in his Top Gear days. Oh, arsing hell. And I have bought a shabby old XKR from Japan. With the smallest cog restoring Richard's XJ and Jaguar specialist Swallows Racing restoring the XK, the quest to see who will have the sweetest Jag is underway. In our last video with the XK, we sorted everything at the front end, and this video is going to be everything at the rear, so the rear subframe and the exhaust. And over here is what Dan has been working on for the last week. Yet again, we've got an immaculate subframe, this being the rear one, that we're going to whack up into the car. Now, you guys saw Richard's rear subframe coming out, so you've seen this process before, so we're going to jump in, whack that one out, whack this one in. Dan, this is looking pretty perfect. LSD. Yep. I've been told that the original XKs didn't come with it. Why? And honestly, I don't know. Probably a costing exercise, um, or Jaguar just kind of felt that the automatic gearbox wouldn't really notice uh, not having a limited slip diff in there. How's it going to take on a 911 or a Merc SL with one wheel peels? That's no use. No, that's it. I mean, we've gone for an upgraded gripper unit in yep. there with our own uh, custom ramp specs. We have changed the ratio slightly as well, so it will pick up and go a bit quicker. But you sacrifice a little bit of top end, so I've worked the gearing out that it is about 180 miles an hour top end now, rather than uh, 202, which is what it's geared for before. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I can't believe how quickly the old subframe came out compared to Richard's one. Is this going to go back in as easy as that? Yeah, I mean, going in is a lot easier than coming out generally, so... Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's crack on. With the rear subframe in the XKR, I decided to take a look around the yard because something had caught my eye. In this edition of What's It Swallows, I thought I'd take you guys around this special piece of kit. This is a Jaguar XKR Palmer Sport. It's one of 10, and it's essentially a track day special made by Jonathan Palmer. He owns effectively every single racetrack in the UK. So what makes this thing so special? Starting at the front, they went a bit mad with carbon. So there's a carbon fibre splitter and carbon intakes for the brakes. And at the back, that's a proper carbon fibre rear wing. One of the end plates has actually fallen off one side, so you can see in and see it's not just carbon fake stickering around it. That is a proper carbon fibre wing. They've uprated the brakes, which look pretty damn serious. And under the bonnet, it is just the 4.2 litre supercharged V8, but it is mated to a ZF gearbox that has paddle shift. And what's cool is that Swallows is actually collecting these Jags. They've got three of the 10 XKR Palmer Sports ever made. Inside, it's apparently completely stripped out, so let's have a look. I actually prefer this generation of XK to the one that we're building inside. And inside, well, there's lots of race car bits. There's some road car bits, still got the proper old dashboard, but straight in front of you, you've got this OMP wheel with carbon shifters. Down here, instrument binnacles, now all carbon with all race car bits. We've got a half cage, and the two plus two seats have given way to make room for that cage. We've got bucket seats in the front. This is a proper piece of kit. 
The guys have given me the keys and apparently this car doesn't have an exhaust, so let's go for a start up. That is race car. Settles so quickly. I have a question for you guys. Has this series got you thinking about getting a Jag of your own? If the answer is yes, then one of the main sponsors of this series, Car Vertical, is the perfect tool to check out a car's history before you buy it. Let's say you want to go to the very top of the tree. You fancy an F-Type SVR, the daddy. You come across one, you get its reg, you punch it into Car Vertical, and you will get a report that looks a lot like this. We have green ticks in the mileage, theft and finance section, so they're fine, but there is an amber warning in the accident section, something that needs further investigation. Scrolling down the report, the data tells you that it is an October 2016 car, but only a year later, damage was detected. Flick down to the damage section and particularly the photos and you can see exactly what damage occurred. Holy mother, this SVR got wrecked. It looks like it's hit something very hard on the front right, so much so that from the front, it's quite hard to tell that this thing is an F-type. All the airbags look like they've gone off too, so this thing is an absolute mess. But the data log in this car vertical report says that the car is back on the road. This thing has been fixed. I can see why you would fix an SVR even in the state, considering it has the holy grail of Jag's supercharged V8, the 5 litre 575 horsepower unit. But would you want to buy a car knowing it had been in this bad a crash and then had been fixed? Probably not. So check out Car Vertical to get a report and buy wisely. Use our exclusive link in the description below to get 10% off when you use Car Vertical. And thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. Nick, you're the fabricator here at Swallows and you've done my entire custom exhaust system, but you've got quite a cool story because you learned to weld on YouTube. How did that all come about? It's more of a passion and uh, I just wanted to get better and better. Um, I was originally a welder by trade, but originally welding heavy steel, and mild steel and MIG welding and stuff. And then I dabbled in exhaust and wanted to get better and better. And the only way was to learn through YouTube. I had no one to teach me. So yeah, I just basically learned on YouTube and lots of trial and error. Cool, well this looks epic. And I gather that the main difference from my past exhaust was the cat here. So this is a sports cat and basically the old cats would have hit the new manual gearbox while these bend around it, is that correct? Yep, yep, so that's a 300 cell cat. Um, so it's all good for emissions and passing the MOT and stuff. The main difference between this and the one for a, a normal X100 yep. is this bend on the bottom. Sure. Um, it's orientated slightly different um, just to, so it passes your manual gearbox as the bell housing is slightly wider than the auto basically. Okay, cool. And are there any other modifications that have been made or are these all just stainless steel kind of copies of what was originally on the car? Yeah, so they are pretty much all OEM replacements. Yeah. But it's all just been up to size to 2.5 inch over the two and a quarter inch. Okay. So it's a bit of a tight squeeze up over the axle with those over axle pieces. But ultimately it gets rid of the squash pipe and improves the flow. So Alex Kirsten has challenged me to a drag race, so we need yep. big power. Yep. And I'm guessing that expansion in the pipe diameter is gonna help a lot with that. Yep, uh, twin two and a half inch system should be good for, I don't know, a thousand horsepower if you fancy it. <laughs> sure. Are you keen? Well, that, um, at that point we're talking nitrous, meth. Yeah. Yep. I was thinking more 450, but fair enough. A thousand sounds better <laughs> to me. Before we install it, do you mind if I give these a play just to make sure they're in tune? Is that all right? Yeah, go ahead. Don't wanna seem rude. Start with this side. Ah. Yeah, that sounds just about right. This side. Ah. Good, good. Sounds perfect. Shall we install it? Yeah, let's go.
So that's the front done, that's the rear done. Let's have a chat about the interior. With the mechanical stuff pretty much taken care of on this car, we can turn our attention to the interior. Now, it's pretty good in here, but there are some bits of damage. So let's start with the roof lining. This happens with pretty much all Jags of this age. It started to sag, so we'll get that re-trimmed. The rest of the damage, I think, is purely down to heat slash sun when it's been in America and Japan. The steering wheel is the first port of call. It started to splinter and sort of de-lacquer itself and it's quite sharp to the touch. So we definitely need to sort that out. The dashboard has suffered from pretty much the same thing. It started to crack, especially on the passenger side here. So I think we should refresh that, apart from this middle section, because this has clearly been refitted while it was in Japan, because it's got a Japanese sat-nav that when you fire the car up, it speaks to you. And I think there's also the Japanese sort of electronic toll system somewhere within here as well. It's very cool. It doesn't look like the rest of the wood. It's a slightly different color, but I think considering the history of the car, we should keep that. The other main thing is the leather seats. The back seats are actually in quite good condition, but the two front seats seem to have dried out. I think the sun has just soaked all the moisture out of them and they've gone a bit rock solid. It's almost like they're about to go a bit crispy. So we're gonna get someone down to have a look at them and hopefully just give them a feed and bring them back to life and make it that sumptuous leather that all Jaguars should have. But otherwise, the interior is not that bad. So another day with the XKR comes to an end. The next episode will be the final build of this car with the last new and refreshed parts going on it. But most importantly, we will be putting this car back on the dyno. Firstly, to make sure that this car still properly functions as a thing since we manual swapped it and to make sure this car is making the proper power it deserves. Alex's video still stings me every single time I think about it. It's time to put that lad in his place. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I've been Mike and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe and I'll see you in the next episode of Project Jag. <laughs> Cameraman, say it with me. Welcome back to <laughs> Project Jag. Project. Come some, on. Some warning, please. <laughs>